Hello Year 12s, today we are looking at proofs of differentiation with chain rule, product rule and quotient rule. The previous video looked at the basic introduction to differentiation from first principles and I'm hoping that that's given you a bit of review and recap building upon your knowledge from last year. In this video we're going to look at specifically the chain rule which states that if you have a function within another function which means you've got a function g of x within the function f of x the derivative of that function is you differentiate one of them just differentiate the inside you can say and you multiply it by the derivative of the outside and that's the general notation okay so it's the derivative of g of x multiplied by the derivative of f of g of x a quick example of that would be we have a function y equals 3x plus 1 all squared so here we have a function which is 3x plus 1 within another function um, which is the function is being squared so we've got one function within another function to differentiate that there are methods of doing it with where you um, state what u and v are and then taking it from there however because we've looked at these cases and we deduced a rule we're going to be continuing on with that rule and that is we differentiate the outside as usual so we bring the power forward and we keep the inner function as it is reduce the power by 1 which is the f of g of x and then we times it by the inner function's derivative which is just 3 which gives us the answer 6 bracket 3x plus 1 so that's the derivative of that function now we're going to prove this rule here the one in blue pen there so we're going to be proving um, why that is the case and how that came about so I'm going to start by drawing a quick sketch just so we understand what the function is so again it's just a generic function and we have two um, coordinates on there because that's how we find the gradient by doing the difference in y coordinates over the difference in x coordinates so the first coordinate is x and after the comma is the y coordinate the y coordinate of that function because we're looking at the chain rule if I go back to the example here if the x coordinate is x the y coordinate is the function within another function therefore the y coordinate here is f of g of x and that's my bracket for the coordinate I'm just going to explain that one more time if we pick a coordinate on this function which is a composite function like looking at this example here on this type of a function the x coordinate would be x the y coordinate would be 3x plus 1 all squared that means the y coordinate on this generic expression would be f of g of x now let's pick another coordinate which is gap of h away so therefore that makes the coordinate x plus h comma f of g of x plus h and there's the big bracket for the coordinates this is very important to understand before you can start the proof let's start the proof so we'll start with dy by dx or you could say rather than saying dy by dx if you haven't specified that y equals f of g of x then you'll have to continue writing d of this function but because I'm specifying it here 
I'm going to start by continue writing dy by dx equals. Again, we stick with limit as h tends towards 0. The difference in the y coordinates, f of g of x plus h minus f of g of x over the difference in the x coordinates, which is x plus h minus x. Now, the next step is not something that will um, be sort of obvious next step. Um, looking at the differentiation from first principles in its generic format from year 12, the steps almost, deem, almost uh, seem instinctual. However, in this case, um, the steps are not going to be intrinsically obvious. Um, so don't think as if, no, why didn't I think of this? Um, these steps have been thought about for years and years uh, by mathematicians and therefore they've come about with these proofs. Okay, so the next step is I'm going to do it in pencil so you understand what I'm about to do. There is no manipulation that can happen at the moment apart from you cancelling out the x's at the bottom. But apart from that, nothing can be done. So the next step is to multiply this whole fraction by 1. And now you'll ask, well, how does that make any difference? And we know that multiplying anything by 1 doesn't really change anything. Therefore, that 1 can be any expression as long as the numerator and the denominator is exactly the same. So we're going to multiply by an expression. We're going to multiply with the function g of x plus h minus g of x over the same expression again. Now, this helps us. What we're going to do next is we're going to swap the denominators around. When you are multiplying fractions, that doesn't make any difference again. So mathematically, it's an um, acceptable thing to do. So I'm just going to put the arrow here. I'm going to write down swap. So hopefully you've got these notes with you when you're looking at these proofs. Again, very crucial to keep writing limit as h tends towards 0. We go towards the next step. f of g of x plus h minus f of g of x over g of x plus h minus g of x times by g of x plus h minus g of x over x plus h minus x. There is a reason why I didn't cancel down the x's here. It's because when I look at this format here, at this point, something should be um, sort of standing out already about this expression. If you think about the proof from first principles in your um, formula booklet, it's very it's it's exactly the same apart from just the function is written in terms of f. Therefore, by deducing, that means that if the function was f of x, that is the derivative of the function f of x. Therefore, that just means that this is the derivative of function g of x. Just this bit here. If you're not too sure, have a look at the previous video I've posted about differentiation from first principles and you'll be able to see the stark similarity between the two. This means that can be written as the derivative g of x. 
and now we're going to have to look at this bit. Again, you'll be able to see very similar thing. Look at the relationship between the numerator and the denominator here. There's an input of x and there's an output. So x plus h is used as an input here and it's been made to go in a function of g of x and this x has gone into the function g again. A very similar thing is happening here. The function g of x is used as an input to go in the function of f of x. So you've got function f of g of x plus h. So this almost becomes your input that goes in the function and this comes as the output by um, it being manipulated by whatever the function f was. So if the whole thing is taken as, let's say, x, um, and the function is x squared, then the whole thing becomes squared. If that is 2, and the function is x squared, then that becomes 4. Do you know what I mean now? And the same things happen here. This function g of x has become an input for the function f of. Which means if we are now doing, if we have said one thing here, which makes this the derivative of g of x, and if we had a similar thing about f of x plus h minus f of x over x plus h minus x, this would have been the derivative of f of x. So we can see the similarities there in these two. We're going to use the same generalization, which will help us in understanding that actually all of this is the derivative of the function f of g of x, which can be written as f of g of x. And now Bearing this times in mind, we can write down the final line of our proof. And yes, we're almost done. Limit as h tends towards 0. We've already said this expression is now equal to f of g of x times by the derivative of g of x. So we've got the derivative of f. I'm just going to write that again a bit clear. So we've got the derivative of f of g of x and we've got derivative of g of x. If we go back to the top, that is what we were trying to prove. We were trying to prove that the derivative of a function within another function is this expression here. And after doing that long proof, we've come to the conclusion that, yes, indeed, that is what's true. And therefore, that's our first proof for chain rule.